The streaming wars are here, and they're going to get more and more ugly the further along we get. Xbox, Twitter, Uber, Postmates, oh, no. Netflix, Movie Pass, Lyft, Google, Facebook, eBay, DoorDash, Apple, Amazon, Airbnb, The Entrepreneur. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur. If you are new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button and ring that bell. If you like these videos and you want more videos about the streaming wars and other app related um, programs out there, we do daily uploads for the most part with the exception of Saturdays, I believe. And sometimes we even upload on Saturday. So I've been talking about the streaming wars for a while and I find it kind of interesting because, you know, years and years ago, we're talking about like, you know, 30s, 40s, something like that. Uh, there was the Paramount Decree. Uh, and what the Paramount Decree was um, for the law was that there was a time when movie com studios out there had what the government considered monopolies. Um, the studio made the movies. They advertised the movies. They owned the distribution and they owned the theaters with which the movies were shown. Which basically meant that if you had the number one movie of the year, you could drive your traffic to those theaters, and some areas might never get your movies, so, and it made it very, very difficult for mom and pop theaters to actually compete. And the government basically said, no, you can't do that, you have to give one of these things up, and ultimately the uh, studios decided to give up the theaters. They figured, hey, you know what, we're still in pretty good shape if we can make the movies, distribute them, and advertise for them. Like, we can give up the movie theater um, aspect. And yet, that's kind of been coming back with the whole app, um, the streaming wars that are coming up. And they're coming soon, and they're going to get very ugly. And they're getting more and more ugly. Like, let's take a look at a few stories. Let's, let's look at this first one. Disney bars Netflix TV ads in battle for streaming supremacy. So, dear Netflix, keep your money. That is the message the Walt Disney Company sent by banning advertising from Netflix on its entertainment television networks, principally ABC and Freeform, as it prepares to introduce its own Netflix-style streaming service, Disney+. Plus. Disney will continue to accept Netflix ads on its ESPN channels, largely because Netflix does not compete with Disney in sports. The Netflix ban, first reported by the Wall Street Journal, was confirmed by Disney on Friday. In a statement, Disney said it had updated its policy on accepting ads from rival streaming services to reflect the comprehensive business relationships we have with many of these companies. Yeah, no, you're, you're changing it because you don't want people to know that anything other than Disney Plus exists, or Hulu for that matter. Netflix does not sell any advertising on its own platform, so Disney has no opportunity to directly advertise Disney Plus to Netflix customers. And Netflix is not embedded with in a larger media conglomerate that Disney relies on for cable distribution. Now, here, here's where this is like a problem. This just shows you that Disney owns too much. They, they own way, way too much. And by the way, Netflix did used to advertise on ABC. Like, I remember watching the Oscars um, earlier this year, and they aired the first teaser for Martin Scorsese's The Irishman from Netflix. I guess that's kind of like a, you know, not going to happen in the future. But yeah, Disney owns ABC and Freeform, and they are coming out with a Disney Plus streaming service, and they want people to sign up for that service, so much so I'm still getting coupons with promotional codes to sign up for Disney Plus, even though I've actually technically signed up for it for three years already. And uh, the thing about this is that, yeah, Disney's got, you know, Disney owns magazines, book publishing, they own TV stations, they own movie studios, and so basically they have a way where it's like, hey, we now have a product that competes with this product, so we can use our influence to take away people's, not that anyone doesn't know that Netflix exists, but you know, they're gonna, they're gonna try to bury Netflix. They're gonna try to pretend it doesn't exist. Like, hey, Netflix isn't a thing anymore. Disney Plus, that's the thing. But they will let it on ESPN because Netflix does not compete with Disney in sports. Although that kind of makes you wonder what happens if Netflix decides they wanna start airing sports. Um, Disney decided not to restrict advertising from HBO Max or Peacock streaming services from AT&T and Comcast that are set to debut next year. That's interesting. AT&T and Comcast are the two largest cable service providers. Well, that, that's why. That, that's why. Because if they were to not advertise those services, then, you know, AT&T and Comcast might, you know, throw their muscle around. Well, hey, you, you don't want us advertising your channel? Well, we're not going to pick you up with our cable packages. So they still want to play nice nice with them but with netflix they're going to play hardball um netflix of course declined to comment now this is bad in of itself but it, it actually kind of gets worse because here's the thing amazon's kind of doing the same thing with disney because people have been wondering why isn't disney plus coming to amazon and it's because amazon is doing having a little hissy fit 
over revenue stream. So here's the thing. Holding out for Disney Plus on Fire TV? Not so fast. Citing sources familiar with the matter, the Wall Street Journal reported Thursday that Disney and Amazon are currently duking it out over an ad space grab by Amazon on Disney apps. The rumored beef is not only the only part of the reason Fire TV has not yet secured a deal to offer Disney Plus, the journal said, but could also result in Disney's various apps, including ABC, ESPN, and Disney Channel, getting yanked from Fire TV as well. While Disney Plus, which launches in just over a month, is an ad-free subscription-based service, the journal reported that Amazon's desire to secure a substantial percentage of the ads on Disney's various other apps has impacted the talks for, in, for over a potential Disney Plus offering on Fire TV. According to the journal, Amazon's ad grab comes as the company pushes for greater avenues for revenue outside of its cloud services. When, cl when Fire TV was first launched, it allowed a number of media companies to have apps on its platform without sharing any advertising revenue, people familiar with the situation said. But lately, Amazon has been tightening its proposed terms in discussion with certain programmers that people said. Well, yeah, because Amazon's got more powerful. That's the thing. And here, here's where Amazon's scary, because Amazon has their, um, their prime streaming service. They have their own original content, and they actually have the box. They have not only the streaming service, they have the box. And they have a streaming service that you know, they can, that sells other people's movies. And look, they can just, if they want a little bit more money, they can just knock them off. They can totally just knock them off the platform. How is this not a monopoly? I don't know. And by the way, um, Amazon's getting done by it too, because apparently Amazon Prime video app, video app temporarily unavailable from Apple. Now this was a temporary thing apparently, but Amazon's Prime video app became unavailable today from Apple's App Store. While there was some speculation that the removal could have been due to a scuffle between the companies, it sounds like it was a technical issue. So, by the way, so in all fairness, Apple restored Amazon's app relatively quickly. They, they, they did. But the timing, the fact that it happened on the day that these two stories were being talked about, it kind of shows that the streaming wars is just getting more and more ugly. And here's the thing. The, I don't understand, like, why isn't this a monopoly? Like, in these cases, you have the studios making their movies, advertising their movies, distributing their movies, advertising their movies. And yes, they now have the venues to host the movies. And in some cases, there's two. Like, Disney has their own app to own to host their content, but then you have like Apple and Amazon who not only make the content, they have the apps and they have the boxes. I mean, is it gonna to get to the point where like Apple's gonna be like, hey, you know what? Um, we're the only streaming service on Apple TV. If you wanna be on our service, you have to pay for us. And then Amazon's gonna be like, well, we don't we don't need to be on the Apple TV. We've got the we've got the Amazon Fire TV. What if Disney decides they want to do a Disney box? Then it's kind of funny, instead of having one Blu-ray player or one cable box, you have all these itty bitty little streaming boxes. And it, it's just no. It this isn't gonna work. This is not sustainable. They they can't do this forever. And look. I know they, they're all companies. They all want to be number one. I know that it's called the streaming wars for a reason, but at some point, this is going to be very anti-consumeristic. And I'm hoping... Look, I don't like when government gets involved. I, I really don't. But at one point, I think the government might have to step in and they might have to do something similar to the Paramount Decree, where they say, okay, listen, here's the thing. You can make your movies if you want. You can make your shows if you want, but you can't own the distribution method as well. If you want to distribute it, it's got to be on disc or it's got to be on cable. Or if you want to stream it, it has to be through a third party place like Netflix or Hulu. Like if Netflix makes something and they want to stream it, they've got to do it through Hulu. And if Disney has something that they want to stream, they have to do it through Netflix or maybe even um, VR, uh, VRV or... Uh, or Crunchyroll, or something like that, you know, or maybe Amazon, who knows. But it, we're getting into a very interesting scenario where it's like, I don't see much of a difference between now and when the Paramount Decree was car was passed. I see a bunch of studios making a bunch of content, and they all have their own little houses, they have their own distribution methods, and they're controlling every aspect of this. Heck, they don't even release the numbers anymore, which, that's not good if you work on these things. There was a story when... With the director of um, the Netflix movie Bird Box, I believe it was called. It was Sandra Bullock. So if I'm so I'm getting it wrong, the name wrong. I'm sorry. I didn't. I really didn't watch the movie. Where and that was one of the few times Netflix bragged about, hey, we we this many people stream the movie, and 
she was she was like oh excited like I directed like this thing that a lot of people watch on Netflix. Uh, this is reportedly what happened. I don't know if it's true or not. Fact check me if you want. But she went to uh, the studio that she was making her next movie for, and she brought this information probably to try to negotiate like a pay raise or something. And from what I understand, the producers like said, well, first of all, we don't know if those numbers are true because Netflix doesn't release the numbers and there's no accountability for them. So we, that, that statistic isn't really even helpful to us. But the other thing is, okay, 40 million people watched it. Well, 40 million, million people watched it for free. We don't know how many people are in the household. We don't know how many people would have actually paid to see it. So it wasn't much of a negotiating, um, it wasn't a bargaining chip to get a raise or anything. So if you work on these movies and they're all going to streaming, you don't know what the numbers are. You don't, you can't use it to negotiate anything. Like this is going to be bad for people in the long run. And yes, by the way, the prices will go up. I mean, I know that some of you are saying like, well, you know, it, yeah, of course we're going to have to pay for this. No, no, no. Disney Plus is not going to be $7 a month forever. I mean, when you've got TV seasons that are like $25 million a season, and I'm hearing like in some cases, like the new Star Wars show is like $10 million an episode. It's like, it's like really crazy, something like that. It's like, no, that's not sustainable. You can't do that for $7 a month. I mean... Yeah, if you put advertisement on there, maybe you could, but, you know, you're going to start seeing more ads, and then people are going to be going, like, well, why are we paying money for the ads? You know, it's just, it's a very, it's going to be a very ugly thing very, very soon. But, look, okay, we have Disney barring Netflix from showing TV ads, Amazon not letting Disney on, and at least temporarily Apple not letting Amazon on. This, this is just going to continue until the streaming wars collapses among itself or until the government gets involved. Now, I'd rather it collapse among itself, upon itself, and you know, them figure something else out. I don't, I mean, I think streaming will be important in the future. I don't think it is the future for this very reason, not unless something changes, but who knows? We're going to have to wait and see what do all of you folks think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I would love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly and you get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. Also, if gas prices are getting a little down, check out the GetUpside app below. It's totally free, but you get cash back on every gas purchase. If you want more content from me, check out my other channels, Kevin T. Rodriguez, the Entrepreneur Vlogs, and Autograph Found. And finally, if you want to talk to me or other fellow ride drivers out there or at Streaming Wars fans, check us out at the Entrepreneur Hangouts on Facebook. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.